One of the big surprises from the recent Fallout Universes Beyond set are the Bobbleheads. This set of seven artifacts, one for each of the special stats, strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck, each have an ability that cares about the number of other artifacts with the Bobblehead subtype you control. So naturally, folks have been going mad with how they're going to get the most out of these cool tricks. On their own, they're three mana mana rocks, but together they give you a myriad of utility, like drawing bonus cards, making creatures, or casting spells for free. Which one of these bobbleheads is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. Because it seems the one that everyone wants to talk about is the luck bobblehead, because it says the following. One tap, roll X six-sided dice, where X is the number of bobbleheads you control. Create a tapped treasure token for each even result. If you rolled six exactly seven times, you win the game. Talk about the embodiment of luck here. Normally, you can only cram seven bobbleheads in your deck, so not only would you need all of them out, you'd need to roll six seven times to win the game. Making extra treasures is also not bad at all, but how do we give ourselves the best chance at winning with this activated ability? Can we build around the bobbleheads as hidden commanders? And what's the best commander to do that with? <laughs> Enough with all the questions. If you want answers, you've got to hit all those good buttons first. That way you can be sure to never miss one of my brews. But you want to know what gives you the best odds of hitting the jackpot with the luck bobblehead. And how do you build a deck around it? We're going to want to look at a few colors specifically and what they bring to the table. Starting with white. White gives us some very strong tutors, especially for finding artifacts. The first is Enlightened Tutor, one of the best tutors in the game. Instant speed and puts what you've searched for on top of your deck. Play it on an opponent's turn, untap, and draw your bobblehead. But the other is Oswald Fiddlebender. This two mana legendary creature can be our commander, meaning we have a repeatable tutor in the command zone. We have to pay a mana and, in the case of bobbleheads, sacrifice a two mana artifact, but we get to put them right into play. This is likely our best bet if we want to collect all of the bobbleheads. We could fill the deck with untap effects like Mage Rite Stone, Thousand Year Elixir, and Staff of Domination in order to activate Oswald multiple times. The upside being that the tutored bobblehead can help pay for the activation cost of Oswald, meaning you only end up paying the untap and sacrifice costs each time. The sacrifice costs are nothing to gloss over here though. A two mana artifact for each search isn't easy to pull off. If we were able to sacrifice tokens like food, clues, or treasures to look for one mana artifacts, we would have it easy. But when it comes to two mana artifacts, we likely have to be filling the deck with two mana artifact creatures like Mirror Retriever, Ornithopter of Paradise, or Gold Mirror. Creatures that are either better off dead or that help pay for activation and untap costs before we sacrifice them. Putting Teshar, Ancestor's Apostle, in the deck means that we could be returning these little creatures back to the battlefield every time we cast another artifact, meaning they're gone but not forgotten. We'll need a lot of tutor fodder for this concept. But other two mana artifacts we want in this kind of deck are other two mana mana rocks. Thought Vessel, Mind Stone, Felwar Stone, Good for getting us up in curve, but lose value once we get our tutor engine online. The more artifacts in this list, the better, since Oswald wants us to find what we need whenever we want it. Being able to string together searches to get all seven bobbleheads in play is an achievement on its own, but it's up to luck for the luck bobblehead to get us seven sixes on the dice. If we want a fallback plan, we could really go wide with this deck though. The Charisma Bobblehead says 4, tap, create X11 white soldier creature tokens, where X is the number of bobbleheads you control. Activate only as a sorcery. So once we get all the bobbleheads in play, this is 7 tokens a turn, and that's real good. Even better if we enhance the number we're creating with a Mondrak Glory Dominus, Anointed Procession, or O'Hare Talk. This could make us 14 tokens, or even 21 tokens on activation. White loves its tokens, so if we're activating the luck bobblehead every turn and missing out on each roll of the dice, we can still activate the charisma bobblehead and get wild with it. It's good to hedge your bets when you're relying on luck. But what if we didn't need to rely on luck? What if we could weight the dice in our favor? Red brings us the ability to do just that. 
Barbarian class, for just a single mana, has multiple abilities, but just the first one reads, if you would roll one or more dice, instead roll that many dice plus one and ignore the lowest roll. That's advantage on our rolls for my fellow D&D players out there, and gives us more chances at rolling the sixes we need to win the game with the luck bobblehead. But that's not all. Red also gives us Will, Blade of Frontiers, everyone's favorite warlock. He also says if you would roll one or more dice, instead roll that many dice plus one and ignore the lowest roll. So together, if Will multiclasses into Barbarian, we could be rolling two extra dice and ignoring the lowest roll. And that means, if we can find all the bobbleheads, we could be looking at nine dice rolled on a single activation of the luck bobblehead, trying for those sixes. Red also gives us a few ways to look for artifacts as well. Gamble, Goblin Welder, and Goblin Engineer all help us put the bobbleheads, well, into our graveyard more often than not. But they let us sacrifice any artifact, like an artifact token, to pull them out of the yard too. It's often easier to bury the bobbleheads in the graveyard and pull them back out, then put them directly to hand or play. Reckless Handling and Scrap Welder both give us more options to either tutor up the bobbleheads or return them from the graveyard to the battlefield, meaning red's likely one of the best colors for this concept. But red doesn't have the market cornered when it comes to dice rolling. No, blue gives us Pixie Guide, potentially adding another die to the die roll pool. With seven bobbleheads, Barbarian Class, Will, and the Guide, well, that's 10 chances to roll seven six times, and that's better odds than you think. Blue could also give us the unset but still legal Vidalkin Squirrel Whacker. I know, I know, but it is legal in Commander. This four mana creature enters the battlefield and rolls two dice immediately, setting its power and toughness to the result. Then, when you roll future dice, you can replace them with the results on Squirrel Whacker, meaning you could be banking a few sixes on this guy and tipping the dice in your favor further for each roll. Roll only five sixes? Replace two of the other results with a couple of banked sixes, and that's seven sixes, baby! Also from Unfinity, we have Bamboozling Beeble and Monitor Monitor, both allowing you to roll more dice or re-roll dice, giving you more chances at the jackpot each and every activation. Are you feeling lucky yet? Now Blue gets us a few other ways to tutor up artifacts too, like Fabricate, Reshape, and War of Invention, meaning Red and Blue together could be giving us the best chances at not only finding all of the bobbleheads, but also the best chances at getting sixes on our die rolls. And if your friends let you get goofy with your builds, well, there's always Kark's Other Thumb, which lets you get even sillier with the amount of dice you roll, since the thumb says whenever you would roll a die, not one or more die. This means that for each die you roll, you roll two instead. If we can get our count up to 10 rolls, then drop the thumb, that's 20 chances to keep sixes. That's almost guaranteed. But, of course, it is a silver bordered card. Make sure the folks you play with are cool with it and prepare to take it out of your deck if they aren't. For this concept, we could pair Will with Candle Keep Sage for some extra card draw, and together, you've got a blue and red deck that's all about pushing your luck. It's not going to be the most competitive deck ever, but if you can roll those dice and win on luck, you'll be having yourself a story to tell. If we are in red and blue, then we have another option too, in one of my absolute favorites, Brutoclad Telcor Engineer. This deck wouldn't necessarily be about cheating our dice rolls, entirely ethically of course. No, this deck would be about going wide with bobbleheads. Combining some of the best of red and blue's artifact tutors, we need to start by making a token copy of one of our bobbleheads. This way Brutoclad can make all of our other tokens in play copies of that bobblehead. We can do that with a Mirage Mockery, a Mirror Works, or Prototype Portal. Then all we need to do is have other tokens in play like Treasures or Clues, and blammo, Brutoclad turns everything into Bobbleheads. We could be using Bobbleheads to activate Bobbleheads, giving us multiple chances to roll Lucky Sixes, and piling up more and more Bobbleheads to increase the number of dice we're rolling dropping a Dockside Extortionist for a boatload of treasures, then turning all of those treasures into bobbleheads? In my personal Brutoclad brew, I've had a dozen copies of tokens, so it's really not hard to get there. 
All of the bobbleheads scale with the volume of bobbleheads, so having one real charisma bobblehead and 10 token copies of a luck bobblehead still means you're creating 11 more tokens on activation. Which means, next turn, they're transformed into more bobbleheads. We've got a real Funko Pop production line happening here. Our fallback plan could be just to turn all of these tokens into a copy of a creature like Ancient Copper Dragon and wrap things up, but why not find another path to win with bobbleheads? Like smashing face with them. Cards like Cyber Drive Awakener or Rise and Shine could turn our bobbleheads into 4-4 creatures that then smash in for lethal damage. Ever see the movie Small Soldiers? Yeah, it's like that, but in magic. This kind of deck is only for the weird and twisted though, so expect me to be playing it on stream soon. <laughs> now of course we also have to discuss Black. Black is, of course, the tutor queen of colors with this game's best ways to find what you're looking for. Whether it's Vampiric Tutor, Demonic Tutor, or Beseech the Mirror, we can easily find anything in our decks exactly when we need it. And if we're adding black to the mix, well, we could be using Ashad the Lone Cyberman as our commander. This 4-mana 3-3 from the Doctor Who Universe's Beyond set gives the first non-legendary artifact spell we cast each turn, Casualty 2, a mechanic first seen in New Capenna. It means we can sacrifice a creature with two or more power and copy the spell we've cast, meaning we could be creating twice as many bobbleheads each cast. This alone could be building up our collection of bobbleheads and could be getting us 14 bobbleheads if we casualty all seven of them. But if we can turn these tokens into creatures, like with a Katsuma the Animator, or an Unctus's Retrofitter, or a Skilled Animator, we could be populating bobblehead creatures. A Girid's Belligerence or a Promise of Aklazots could be getting us more and more copies of bobblehead creatures, making us an army of toys to crush our opponents with. We'll need Sacrifice Fodder though, so anything that makes us lots of two power bodies, like classic Grave Titan, is perfect for ensuring that we have the bodies to casualty away to our commander. Now in all of these situations, we could be including Unwinding Clock into the mix to activate our Luck Bobblehead on everyone's turn too, giving us more and more chances to hit the jackpot. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And while green doesn't typically get along with artifacts, it does give us something similar in Seedborn Muse, which can act the same way, untapping our bobbleheads to be reactivated on our opponent's turns. Just keep in mind that some bobbleheads, like Charisma, Endurance, and Strength, can only be activated at sorcery speed. The other four though? Each turn if you've got untapping effects, and that can get pretty good. But let me know in the comments which of these is your favorite brew, and which one you would like to see get a full deck tech on the channel soon. Drop a comment down below, and be sure to visit my sponsor Moxfield for all my personal deck lists. Moxfield is the best deck building platform in the world and makes it easy to whip up brews like these on a whim. While you're there, make sure you're following my profile to never miss a brew. And while you're here, check out these other awesome videos or some of my shorts. If you were inspired to build a deck today, you have to hit that subscribe button. It's the law. And as always, good luck and have fun.